Welcome back to NPL Weekly. Heading into our grand finals, I'm Becca Scott. This is Alias V and Cedric Phillips at the desk. Hey friends. How's it going? So good because we're watching Cat This Mirrors all day long. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to have a rematch apparently. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's going to be a rematch between Matt Nass and Lee Shitian, both on the Cat This combo deck. Uh, Matt known very much for his skill with combo decks and already beat Lee Shitian earlier today in a match, but, uh, but that may have had a lot to do with the Ashiok draws. <laughs> and here's our bracket. We can see how Nass went straight to grand finals there, and Lee had to uh, go down to the lower bracket and work his way back up. So he's going to need to beat Nass in two separate matches in order to make that bye to day two of Mythic Championship 5 in October, uh, which is a really big deal. Missing out on that, uh, getting to skip that full first day of play, just sit back and relax uh, yeah. when there's a lot at stake at these championships. So uh, very exciting for uh, Less work for Nat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Left in the day today. <laughs> Here's our head to head for these players, which we've seen before, both with excellent round robin records of 5 2, which I guess if you look at it that way, it's it's not too surprising that Li Shi Tian made it back up to uh, to the upper well, after going down. They both did their job earlier uh, in the kind of the head to head round robin aspect of things. They both had the best records coming out of it, Matt, uh, com Matt and him both com being at 5 and 2. So that meant whoever lost that match was able to really get back to the Grand Finals pretty easily because Lee only had to win one match where we saw earlier for Brian and Ken, they had to climb through the Every lower player. finals to be able to do that. So this isn't too surprising. And again, with Lee having to win twice where Matt only has to win once, we saw this in the last time when Carlos Ramal defeated Autumn Burchett in the other division. Two's a lot yeah. in this situation, so it's really, really hard to imagine Lee winning, even though he is great, because just from a numbers perspective, one is, believe it or not, <laughs> less than two, so it's hard to pick against Matt here. Absolutely, uh, and obviously both these players, it, with of course with combo decks in general, everybody in the MPL is such a talented player, but these two players seem particularly adept with this particular combo, because there are so many choices to make. So we'll see what sort of choices we see in this first match of today's Grand Finals for, finals for the Sapphire Division in this match right now. Alrighty, kicking things off, we've got, ooh, old check lands, that's not what you want to see. We do have a Mox Amber, Kethis, Lazav, and Tamiya. What do you think of this hand, Cedric? It strikes me as just okay. It's not my favorite because of all those check lands as you did mention, but it does seem capable, and the reason for that is you've got your important cards in your hand. You've got a Mosh, you've got a Kethis. Both those cards are quite good, and who knows? You might be able to, you might be able to draw a land on the battlefield untapped, though a redundant Mox isn't my favorite. It isn't the worst draw in the world. And taking a look at Matt Nass's hand, he does have the Diligent Excavator, which uh, Lee is missing currently from his Wombo combo. But kicking things off here, firing off the Diligent Excavator. No Mox Amber to follow that up, though, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, we are good to go. Kicking this Kethis combo mirror off. And uh, just taking a look at the hand here of Lee. He's got the Lazav, the Multiferous he could fire off. He doesn't want to really fire off the Mox Ambers just yet, right? No, That's not something just, you want to hang on to. Not just yet. And Lazav actually can't be cast in this situation because the only land that comes into play on tap will be a Breeding Pool uh -huh, in yes. combination with the Glacial Fortress. So Lazav can't be cast, but it is interesting on what land you're supposed to play here because Breeding Pool doesn't unlock Isolated Chapel. So Lee's going to go with Isolated Chapel and just pass the turn back. The good thing in quotes here is that this matchup is a little bit of a slog, so though Lee's lands are entering the battlefield untapped right now, I don't think it's going to come back to hurt him too much. Matt Nass on the other side is seeming to uh, go off quite well here, getting a turn three Kethis, the hidden hand into play, milling himself, and you know what, swinging in for that one point to damage, because why not? Well, oddly enough, <laughs> if you remember the match we watched earlier between Matt and Lee, mm -hmm. this is very reminiscent of that first game where Matt had Kethis and Diligent uh, Excavator, started off that way, but what he was missing were copies of Mox Amber. Yeah. So we're seeing that once again, which is a little wild to think about. We're seeing a repeat <laughs> performance of this problem again. <laughs> Hopefully that is a problem that he can rectify. We're gonna see the Mox Amber enter the battlefield for Lee and just tap it for some mana. Does he wanna fire off the uh, Lazav here? Looks like it. Well, no. He's gonna get a little bit of mana no, here no, from the Ashiok, Moxes. Yeah. yeah, he can actually go towards Ashiok yeah, because of the cool. black black casting goss. Remember the Mox is gonna tap for the mana yeah. that the legendary mm -hmm. permanent can't produce. So in this instance, it's those obs on colors of white, green, and black. So the Zav will get on this battlefield soon enough, but for now, <laughs> Ashiok is here. It's milling Lee's own graveyard, and it will of course keep Mats in check. The question is for how long. 
So we saw some goodies go into the graveyard there for Kethis to grab. We have a Fibbleth up in the hand of Matt Ness. Also got to Fairy, who is going to bounce some stuff as well. Let's see what he goes for here. Are we bouncing the Kethis? I have to imagine it's bounce your opponent's Kethis and just simply draw a card. Depending on how your lands line up, you can deploy Fibbleth if you do need a blue mana to be able to do that, of course, which Matt is missing at the moment so with just a green black land. Both players struggling a little bit with their mana base. So we're misbehaving slightly. But what's important there is that Matt was able to take care of the Ashok that's on the battlefield, mm -hmm. which means his graveyard is back online, and at this stage of things, Lee is a little bit behind, and you might as well throw in a scry for good measure. Exactly right. We do draw the Yagmas Vile offering off the top of the library, but it's not going to do too much just yet. We still need to find all of our mana sources. We've got Kethis the Hidden Hand that can be replayed, or Tamiyo, or Lazav now, finally can come into play. What's in the graveyard? Nothing for it to target just yet. So chances are it's going to be a Kethus or a Tamiyo. Now Tamiyo is a great card in digging through the library. Possibly want to go find a Diligent Excavator. There are options here. Yeah. Tamiyo on this battlefield, if you are to plus it, it's very unlikely that it's going to die. But you also have to be a little bit wary if you're Lee that you could just die in the very next turn. Matt has piece A and piece B of the combo there in the excavator and the Kethis. The thing, again, that's missing are the Moxes, though there is one Mox in the graveyard right now for Matt because he milled one with the excavator from the Teferi that was cast and then resolved. So. If you're Matt, you know that you have the potential to win next turn. And if you're Lee, you kind of have to sit here and just say, well, I guess I hope I don't die. <laughs> so Kethos going to work on the graveyard, exiling two cards, giving him the ability to replay a Mox Amber or an Ashiok that's hanging out there, bringing back the one that was killed by the creatures, and we're going to go milling. Let's see how many legendaries Ashiok can hit. Yeah, this is actually pretty nice here Only if you're Lee. You did mill over a Tamiyo, but you're able to exile Matt's Graveyard, which means that's one less Mox Amber for him to work with. Now here comes another Mox Amber for Lee. Nothing more to do this turn, though. So it's always a little bit of a sad, uh, you know, a bit of a womp womp when uh, you can't keep the turn for yourself. But hey, such is the nature of the combo deck. Drawing a Fibbleth up the last for Matt Ness. Let's see what Phyllis it finds. It's a good place to start. It only costs one mana. You get to mill yourself two cards. Mox Amber and a Hollow Fountain go to the graveyard. Now, of course, you'll get to draw a card. What does Phyllis bring? We found a drum roll, please. Tamiyo Collector of Tales. Not a bad draw. Good card to uh, go digging through the library or bring something back, provided it doesn't get Ashiok. But Ashiok, speaking of the Dream Render, Ooh, is going to have a good time with Lee Arson's. Graveyard. Yeah, things are going to get really interesting now here for Matt because he does have Kethis. He just milled over another Mox, so he should be able to actually get some work done. The, the thing that's the missing piece right now is blue mana. However, once Mox Amber comes back onto the battlefield, you got access to blue because of Fibblethip being legendary. So I'm not sure how deep Matt can go at this stage of things, but perhaps a good mill will allow him to do some real work here with Kethis. Well, there goes Li Shitian's graveyard, so no fun shenanigans for his Kethus, the Hidden Hand. But taking a look in the library, Kethus is going to go exiling and replay those Mox Ambers that are just sitting pretty waiting to be used. This game may end yeah. right now, because we're seeing <laughs> Mox that are going to be able to be replayed from the graveyard. Uh, there's a diligent excavator on the battlefield, which means two cards are going to get milled, and of course Matt's going to be able to be able to add mana. Also worth noting, he's going to want some blue mana. He's already got one floating right now. He's probably going to generate another one with this Mox Amber that's on the battlefield. Then of course Fibblethip will join the fray. Mm -hmm. That'll mill two more cards. The Tamiyo could join the fray. The green mana can be provided via the Temple Garden. So I'm not going to call it just yet, but it wouldn't surprise me if it ended here. So Lazav the Multifarious joining the fray ahead of the Fibblethip. We can still get to Fibblethip eventually, mm -hmm. perhaps, if uh, nothing goes awry for Matt Nass. But at this point, it seems like he is very much in the driver's seat. And uh, Lee is just taking a look and deciding, all right, when do I scoop here? I mean, what could go wrong for Matt? that uh, Lee would get another turn. Um, you know, the mills would have to be unkind, truth be told, <laughs> uh, and I find that to be somewhat unlikely. Uh, it is worth noting that coming into this turn, Matt did not have a graveyard. He had actually a Mox Amber and a Diligent Excavator exiled via the Ashiok that Lee has on the battlefield. So that's the scary thing about this Kethis deck, which is it rebuilds its graveyard very quickly. Ashiok is good against the opponent, but also very good for you. And now Kethis is going to get to continue to do its thing, going to exile two more legendary permanents, make them cheaper, and allow them to keep returning Moxon. So I'd be, again, surprised if Lee gets another turn here. <laughs> 
Well, let's see how this plays out. We do have a Teferi and a Tef oh, sorry, and a Teferi, not two Teferis. A Teferi and a Mox Amber available to Matt Nass, and he is happily milling himself, seeing what he can bin. That was an Oath of Kaya into the graveyard. So, hasn't filled it up as much as he would like. He's a little low on legendaries, yep, but it looks knows. like Lee has, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, he knows the writing's on the wall. Okay, let's go to game two, Mr. Ness. It's funny because as we watch these games continue to unfold, you know, Matt has started out against Lee with Diligent Excavator and Kethis in like all the games that we've just watched these two play against each other, and Matt's always missing the Moxen, but mm -hmm. he's always able to find the Moxen and get the <laughs> job done. So sideboarding all the Oath of Kaya's out, Tula Zev out, and then bringing in some more removal as well as Jace and Vraska. Just Vraska's a pretty good uh, sideboard card. Just some more interaction, yeah. and we saw the match where when these two played and Matt won game number three, it was the Jace kill, Ma uh, milling himself a ton, keep rebuying Mox Ambers, eventually he's going to have no cards left into his deck, play a Jace, draw a card, win the game that way. So this is exactly how we sideboard boarded last time, not surprised to see him do it this time, and don't forget about that swamp given <laughs> Assassin's Trophy. Yes, the only player to bring a sideboarded swamp in, and uh, yeah, maybe Lee will be luckier this turn, or this game, to actually find some of his key removal pieces. Which he, yeah, he just completely missed out on them in the previous game. I guess we got to see what he's going to be bringing in because we know he's got Assassin's Trophy on his side, among other things here. And just like Matt, he's bringing in interaction. He's boarding out Oath of Kaya's. Yagmas of Vile Offering is leaving. A little bit of Teferi slicing. Same thing can be said for Tamio and Fibblethip. But it's just more interaction. Legion's End, Elder Spell, Vraska, Assassin's Trophy. So you don't get yourself into the situation we saw last game, which is your opponent plays an Excavator, they play a Kethis. You don't get either off the battlefield. And the game ends in pretty short order. Yeah. So, uh, Hopefully we'll get a better better hand, I would say, from Lee, because he was a little bit, uh, he struggled to find what he needed to get going. And taking a look at this opening hand, not too bad, got two of the pieces for well, the combo. Well, he kept this one pretty quick, yeah, actually. Yeah. You that know, was this, just like a snap keep. It yes, really, please. really yeah. was. You know, I was a little surprised <laughs> to see him keep it so quickly. I mean, of course, Kethis is in hand, so it's hard to send it away, assuming you can cast it, which he can. Mox, we know, is integral with Kethis, mm -hmm. and then Ashiok does a decent enough job of keeping track of the graveyard and filling up your own. So, and I'm not saying the keep is bad, I actually think it's quite good, but uh, it was a snaparoo, as yeah. we like to say. He was very, very happy with that, so <laughs> let's get things going here, just running out the lands for both players. Nothing on the battlefield just yet, but we will see Lazav the Multifarious enter the battlefield and just be Lazav for now. Matt's start this game is much different than the previous ones against oh, yeah. Lee, as he does not have Excavator, he does not have Kethis just yet. He's got more expensive Planeswalkers to work with, the two copies of Tamiyo, and Teferi to buy a little bit of time. So yeah. it is just worth noting that this, this, is a, this is a different start. Oh yeah, for sure. So Lee is now running out. Ashiok, Dream Render, gonna get rid of the graveyard of Matt Nass, mill himself a four. Seeing if he can find some more of his combo pieces. Mill quite a few goodies there. And the goodbye graveyard for Matt Ness. Matt's uh, Planeswalkers, you know, they could slow him down a little bit, but he does have the Scrylands to try and shore up his draws a little bit. Get a little look at the graveyard here. Fibbletip, Elder Spell, Kethis, and Watery Graver down there for Lee. I'm gonna head back over to Matt. See what three mana spell he wants to play. It looks like just a fairy, which makes a lot of sense. So Teferi, hero, not hero Dominaria, not yet, little T, you're still baby T. So Teferi, <laughs> just plussing, hasn't got anything to bounce yet, there's no point in bouncing. Lazav, because he doesn't bring you a card like good boy Fibblethip does. Ashiok, again, milling. Lee, getting rid of the graveyard, finding some goodies as well there. We've got a Marks, we've got Kethis, the hidden hand, what is in that graveyard? Spare copies of Ashiok, we've got Tamiyo, Legion's End, the Elder Spell. There's a Fibblethip hanging out and another Kethis. So let's run out the Kethis hidden hand. And uh, you may as well get things rocking here. Land and Mox. Not too bad. Pretty good turn. So scary thing here for Lee is you can take a look at his hand right now. It looks like he's going to be using Kethis to get a little bit of value from the graveyard. Um, and it looks like he's going to exile Kethis and Fibblethip to deploy Ashiok? maybe another Ashiok. So that's going to allow him to, again, fill up more of the graveyard. So he's going to lose the Ashrak that's on the battlefield. He'll get one that's got a little bit more loyalty, Kethis to defend it and grow the graveyard. But what I was going to mention is just the lack of hand that he has right now with just a bunch of lands. Yeah. But this Kethis deck is so unique because your graveyard is simply an extension of your hand. So he's got more on than it appears. He's got more going on, pardon yeah, yeah. me, than appears on the surface. Exactly right. We have seen this Kethis deck from out of nowhere just fill up the graveyard and, you know, extend the hand, as you say, just keeping things going for it. Teferi being rude as Teferi does and sending Kethis back to the hand of Lee. 
And uh, what has Matt Nass got going for him? He's got the Skylands, he's got Tamios. You know, he might want to start digging and looking for those combo pieces because he hasn't found the other two just yet. Actually, he hasn't found any of them. Yeah, well, the risk here is, of course, with Tamio, you're going to name a card you may or may not hit, but the other cards are going to be placed into your graveyard, yeah. and then Ashgoth will exile them. Oh, so yeah. I, I imagine he's going to deploy Tamio. That doesn't come as much of a surprise. What he names is debatable. He's named various different cards over the course of this tournament so far. So we'll have to see what he's up to here. He is naming, drumroll please, Fibblethip? Sure, why not? No, Ashiok. Okay, so you want to play the Ashiok game too? I like it. No graveyards to work with? Let's see who can pull out the win that way then. But as we've seen, this Kappa's deck can just create a graveyard out of almost nothing. Tyrant Scorn is a pretty good draw here for Lee because that allows him to check the Lazav if he cares to do so. And of course, she does still have Kethis in hand to redeploy right now. So, you know, if we had an advantage bar Rockman rolling right now, I'd have to say it would go to Lee uh, because he's got the active Ashiok on the battlefield that's going to clean out Matt's graveyard and it's going to continue to fill his up. So, a good position here for Lee in this second game. Yeah, and Ashiok grabbing another copy of Mox Amber. So. There's going to be some uh, shenanigans here, possibly, if his deck behaves. Let's see what he can do with the cards available to him in his graveyard. His hand is his hand is icky. It's not looking great. You don't want that many lands. Not at all. But uh, the graveyard is looking quite spicy at this moment. All right, Kethus, let's see what you're going to do for us. So we got Vraska, Ashiok, Tamio, and two copies of Mox Amber. He can start to, you know, replaying some stuff. Could possibly get the Vraska or the Tamio out. What do you think is his... Uh, what do you think he wants to get going here? Another Ashiok, just to keep milling? Well, of course he can replay the Moxes, so that's yeah. obviously that's that, an, that, that's an obvious thing. Those are never getting exiled yeah. unless it's like, you know, <laughs> extreme sort of Something strange would have to happen <laughs> there. Uh, it, it is either Tamio or Ashiok and how much mana he's working with here. Tamio is worth noting because the loyalty is so high on that card that there's probably some interest in doing that, though I would argue that Ashiok does a better job of filling up the graveyard. Yeah. So I think that's part of the reason you're seeing him take a moment. A redundant copy of Kethis is the easiest one to say, okay, I don't need yeah. this anymore. Um, but for Vraska's not really doing a ton on this battlefield, so I'm not too surprised to see him considering exiling that. I mean, Vraska's great at getting rid of lands. He has a handful of it, but... Uh, that part that is, could, that part is very true. I mean, he does have extraneous lands uh, on the battlefield and in hand, given the access that he has to the multiple copies of Mox Amber. So the graveyard's live now. I'm curious to see what he wants to do with it. Same. So we definitely know there's going to be cycling of Mox Ambers. That's mm -hmm. a given. So let's play the land for turn. Do we rock out the Tamio? We do indeed. What does Tamio go for? I've got a feeling if Tamio is going to be played here by Lee, he's going to be looking for Diligent Excavator. Mm -hmm. It's the piece of the puzzle that is missing at this stage, but it looks like he might just return something instead. And if he has an Excavator in his graveyard, then it makes sense to just return that. So I think that's it the missing indeed, piece. Yeah. There you go. So we can get that out with the uh, two Mox Embers that are floating, but instead we're going for the Elder Spell? Perhaps. Oh. Oh, okay. There is some value in getting these Planeswalkers off the battlefield that, that, uh, that Matt does have, so. Okay, so it looks like we're going to kill some Planeswalkers. Okay. It's Nicol Bolas's, uh, you know, fantasy right here. <laughs> Let's go. And then, um, plusing it, because obviously we can kill as many Planeswalkers as we want, just giving more loyalty to Ashiok. Good Makes question. Sense. Good question. Because Tamiya is cool and all, but like, you know. Ashiok can just keep milling everything. It looks like it's, oh, it looks like it's headed to Tamiya. Hey, yeah. All right, sweet. Okay, so Tamiya can bring back two cards back to back if needs be. Or just, you know, keep plussing and digging through the library, finding the pieces that we need. I it personally, like if I was playing this deck and I'm not, you know, nearly as good as these players at all, I would have brought back the Diligent Excavator just to start milling. Well, I think the nice thing, I think the thing that makes some sense to me if I'm Lee in that spot is I say, I'm saying, take care of these Planeswalkers now because mm -hmm. I don't need to win right away. Yeah. Next turn, my Tamiel's still going to be alive. It's very unlikely that it dies. And then I can get back the Excavator and then I can go absolutely nuts. Yeah. And I think that's what we'll probably see on the next turn. Matt's going to deploy a Tamiel of his own. He'll plus. Not sure what he's going to name here. Maybe a Mox because he's still missing those. He found the Kethus. No, okay. he found the Kethus. Sweet. Well, that's the name. Oh, yeah. So Kethus is now available to Matt Nass. Still missing the Moxes, though. Where are those things hiding? Yeah, Matt's assuming a lot here. And what I mean by that is Matt's assuming he's going to get to take another turn. I am <laughs> finding that to be rather unlikely because Lee already has Kethus. He has active Planeswalkers that can fill up his graveyard. And he has the Excavator in the graveyard that he can return with the Tamio. So um, I would be, as I said in the last game, a little bit surprised if we see Matt take another turn. But we'll see how things do shake out here for Lee. <laughs> Lee drawing another land off the top of Temple Garden. His lands have been misbehaving, but his graveyard has been 
okay so far when it's not being exiled. <laughs> so Ashiok just milling a few more cards, finding all legendaries. That was a great mill for Ashiok, getting rid of Matt Nass's graveyard, and Tamio is gonna go digging, bring something back. She should be in a zombie deck at this rate. <laughs> Diligent Excavator is gonna be the friend that comes back to play, and uh, we're gonna see some Kethos action very, very soon. Yeah, this thing should probably be over now, and the reason I say that is Excavator's now in the hand, gonna be heading, of course, to the battlefield. Matt's not even gonna waste <laughs> any time. Matt plays combo decks, he knows yeah, when he's he knows. dead, and that game is ending right away, because, as we mentioned, there are already Moxes in the graveyard, so it's pretty easy from that point. You know, you're gonna be milling a ton of cards with the Excavator, you've already got access to all your Moxes, which is, in theory, yep. infinite mana, and that's gonna do it. So, now we do a third one. Oh, goody. Which should Excited. be good, because if Matt <laughs> wins, He's done. We're Good. done. Done and dusted. Right? It's over. Let's jump straight back in. Why don't we? Cool. So we have two Hellad Fountains, a Diligent Excavator, Fibblethip. This isn't a terrible hand to keep. We're missing the other two colors, three colors. Well, so this uh, is this is what's interesting about a four-color deck, right? You yeah. have good mana. All your mana taps for multiple colors, right? Because this deck doesn't play any basics. Mm -hmm. But two hollowed fountains or two blue-white sources when you have Kethys in hand means you're missing two colors. Yeah. Now this but there one... there was a Fibblethip and a... Uh, diligent Excavator, so could have found it, but this looks a little worse now. Yeah, so this one does look a little bit worse because, of course, you have to put a card away if you elect to keep this hand. You're still far away from Kethys, but I don't think you want to take a mulligan to five. Vraska is unsurprisingly going to the bottom, <laughs> but this is a difficult keep. You are missing Excavator or Fibblethip or any two-mana spell to play. I'm a little bit surprised at the keep of if Vraska is going to stay in that hand. Yeah, this is a bit of a rough one. I... I am I'm, I'm worried about this, but, you know, you call it Vraska is the card that needs to go right now. So let's see how this game shakes out. It is do or die time for Li Shi Tian. If he wants to take down Matt Nass, now's the time to do it. This also very quickly shows you the power of temples in this deck, yeah. especially in the early stages of the game. So Matt has a Temple of Silence. He kept the top card on top. That was a breeding pool. It was the missing green mana for Kethys. So now the ability to actually go Fibblethip, blue card, into green, white, black <laughs> card shows just how powerful this deck is when the mana's online. Oh, yeah. It's great when the mana behaves, and it can be heartbreaking when it doesn't. So Fibblethip the Lost is hanging out on the battlefield. He's the only one there, so might as well get him for one point of damage, taking a lead down to 19. What do we follow that up with? Is it going to be Teferi, or is it going to be Ashiok, or do we just get Kethys online straight away? Well, we have seen Matt so many times be very aggressive about getting Kethys onto the battlefield, just going turn two excavator, turn three <laughs> Kethys. Could have played turn three Kethys again here, but it looks like he wants to start filling up his graveyard with Ashiok. He's under no pressure at this stage of things, even though it is only the third turn of the game. But this is a must-answer threat here from Lee. So let's see what Lee can do to answer it. Going to run out the Woodland Cemetery. Can play his own Kethys or get Ashiok running and get rid of that graveyard before it becomes a problem. So, dueling Ashioks, it's a battle of the Ashioks for sure. Now remember, this is only a temporary solution if you're Lee, because we have watched many times today where a player has no graveyard and all of a sudden they have a Bam, full graveyard. graveyard and the game ends. <laughs> so, it doesn't take much. <laughs> so Ashiok activating, getting rid of the graveyard. No graveyards to worry about right now. So both Kethis, Kethis is, is Kethai <laughs> aren't doing anything <laughs> currently. But like you said, this uh, deck has the propensity to go absolutely nuts and fill up the graveyard with no time to spare. So Ashiok gonna plus milling himself. Does Matt Nass gets a few goodies in the graveyard there? His you know the combo pieces in essence, all hitting the bin. And uh, he's got the option here of running out Kethys or Teferi. Teferi's not doing too much for him right now, so I'm guessing it's going to be the Kethys. Get that out, and uh, possibly a Scryland, just to shore up his draw for the next turn. Interesting thing, it's a small one. I don't think that's going to play a huge role in this game, given the context of Lee's hand, but Matt has drawn the Swamp, so if Assassin's Trophy does show up for Lee, Matt won't be able to search up a basic. Not the <laughs> end of the world, but it is a small thing to note. And given all the milling that's going on, too, I wouldn't be surprised if the Swamp actually, more often than not, finds its way into the graveyard, <laughs> as opposed to actually being in the deck when it's time to search for a basic with Assassin's Trophy. So if you're Matt, you're cognizant of that, that Assassin's Trophy could become more of an annoyance now than it normally would be. Exactly right. So Lee just taking his time with his turn, figuring out what he wants to do. He does have the Elder Spell to get rid of the opposing Ashiok if he so chooses, but he knows how many Planeswalkers are in this deck, so probably going to hang on to it until the time is ripe. Well, until the Planeswalkers are ripe for the picking, I should say. Looks like Lee might be thinking Teferi here. He, he does have Mox Amber. 
in hand that he can use to generate some mana as well. You see the Kethys, you do see the Teferi, as we've already mentioned in the Elder Spell, if he wants to line that up this turn and take care of the Ashiok. I think that's part of the reason Matt probably hung tight with that Teferi, he didn't want to get two for one there. <laughs> so here's a Teferi for Lee. So Teferi Time Reveler enters the battlefield, gonna return Kethys the Hidden Hand to Nass and say, nope, you have to replay that. You will not have your mana available if you want to go comboing next turn. Mox Amber going to enter the battlefield, just ramping him up a little bit. And uh, Elder Spell time, killing that Ashiok, and let's plus Little Teferi? Yeah, either Ashiok? or, honestly. I mean, there, there's some value in pushing Little Teferi because it gives you the ability to bounce again. Mm. And bouncing again means get to draw a card again. And, and we have seen so many times, again today, where a player has bounced their own Mox Amber and redeployed that. So I think I would put it on Little Teferi, those little two counters, just to enable a bounce again next turn. And it looks like that's what happened. Yep, exactly right. You called it, Cedric. And we are getting rid of Graveyard again. We've seen this so many times. Ashiok just really doesn't like Graveyards. <laughs> So there we go, no graveyards to contend, contend with on Matt Nass's side. We've got a Diligent Excavator, Fibble Thip, the Elder Spell, and Tamiyo in the Li Shi Tian's graveyard. Looking at this, this deck, as all this uh, match as it stands now, who, do you, who would you say is in the driver's seat? Well, this game is leaning towards Lee right now. Active Ashiok, Teferi with the ability to bounce something else, and we can see in Lee's hand, though Matt doesn't know this, that there's a Kethys hanging out. So <laughs> this is not a bad start here for Lee. This will be its Kethys into a Teferi and now an attack with Fibble Thip's gonna knock Ashiok down to just one counter. So if you are Lee, you have to decide now if you want to actually activate Ashiok for what would be quote the final time. Yeah. But don't forget, Kethys being in hand means that Ashiok can be replayed from the graveyard. So it's realistically not the final time. Oh yeah, not to, it's no harm in killing a planeswalker. That happens all the time. So <laughs> He's got options for him. Like, there's always an option with this Kethys combo deck, and I think that's what makes it so interesting to watch and, you know, so difficult and intricate to pilot. And just watching these players, you know, masterfully craft this game, it's, yeah. Well, this deck is, <laughs> I mean, this deck is absolutely terrifying. There's so many, there's so <laughs> many unintuitive lines of play oh, yeah. and lines of thought that you don't see from basic decks like Mono Red Vampires and, or Mono Red Aggro Mono or Red Vampires. Vampires. That well, sounds terrifying. Not yet. Please, not no. Yet. Don't know. do it, Wizards. Don't tell Insulin me that. <laughs> Don't give them ideas. Vampires are fun, though. I do like them. But no vampires this time. It is all about the Kethys combo and graveyard shenanigans. There's quite a bunch going on for Lee right now. Matt doesn't have any graveyard to speak of. He's just got Kethys, a copy of Kethys in hand, and Teferi on the battlefield. So we're going to see Lee's Kethys enter the battlefield and start having some fun with his graveyard, I believe. One thing that's a little bit interesting here for Lee is, you know, his hand's not particularly good. We've talked many times about how the graveyard is an extension of the hand here. Mm -hmm. But what's a little bit interesting about this is if that Kethys dies, Lee does not have very much going no. on. So I think that might be why there was a little bit of hesitancy before deploying that because he'd like to be able to play Kethys plus something else and have it be impactful. Yeah. There's not a ton going on right now if you're Lee. So he's just taking a look at his graveyard, deciding what he may want to get out. He could get the Ashiok back, could possibly get the Tamiyo back. He doesn't also have that much to exile, though, so it's a little bit slim pickings currently. I bet he wants to fill that up a bit more. Yeah, his Ashiok activations have been a little bit unkind yeah. to him, so there's not a ton going on right now. The bounce from Teferi is going to go towards Matt's Kethys. Now, for what it's worth, Ooh. Matt doesn't have a ton going on. That Assassin's Trophy is pretty nice, though. Yeah, that's a pretty good draw. And we do know that the only basic land that Matt Nass has is currently on the battlefield, so okay. it's going to be a free kill for two mana. Okay, Fibblethip, I'm sorry, dear friend. You're going into exile, so you're going to be lost for a bit. And to Fairy Time Raveler, so it looks like we're going to go for the Ashiok. Maybe this resurrected Ashiok will be a little kinder to Li Shitian. Well, does he want to go to Resurrected Ashok, or does he want to go to Tamiyo? Tamiyo's got the higher upside of oh, staying yeah. on the battlefield, so it looks like it's going to be the four-mana Planeswalker, the Collector of Tales. Yeah, use all that mana. And what are we going to name? I wouldn't be surprised if it's Excavator here. Possibly Mox? Hmm. What's he looking for? Oh, there you go. Diligent Excavator, you called it. Does he find one? Yoink! Yes, straight off the top. Easy peasy. Never didn't have it. Can't play it, though, at this moment in time. Uh, so he's going to have to pass the turn back. Unfortunately. <laughs> so Matt Nass now gets a chance to do something. He's got to refill that graveyard. He's got to get his combo back online. He does have to ferry and fibble thip the loss to help him out a little bit, but they're not going to be doing too much for him. Matt's hand not terribly impressive here. You see Lazav, two Kethys, 
and a breeding pool. No way to actually mill himself. Does have the ability to activate Safari, so he's going to do that to bounce Kethis. Big draw step here for Matt. What does he find? That is the question. He's got to find something to do dun, here dun, because dun. He, he knows that if he doesn't find anything to do with the draw, oh. Temple of Malady is not it. Yeah. The game probably ends. Excuse me, it's Temple of Milady. Mm, Milady, my Milady. apologies. Especially with this uh, night theme coming up, it's going to be Milady mm, for understood. sure. Understood, understood. <laughs> Right, so not much going on for either players right now. We do have the Assassin's Trophy for Lee that can kill whatever threat is most annoying on Matt's side of the board, so it's going to be interesting to see what he fires it off at. Lazav, what are you looking for? Surveilling? Was that a Jace? Uh, it is. It's a Jace. Oh. Mysteries. oh, where are you going, buddy? Jace into the graveyard? Jace is going to get munched. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Jace is in the graveyard. So if Lee can find a way to bring back his Ashiok, that Jace is not going to be a factor in this game. Yeah, and bringing back Ashiok in this game is pretty trivial at this point. You've got Tamio that can do it. You've got Kethis that can do it. So if he feels as though he needs to get rid of that Jace in the graveyard, he can do so. But yeah. this strikes me as a turn that will probably end this match. I'd be surprised if we go further past this. Uh, we're going to see Excavator start things off into Kethis so you can get your mill too. Mm -hmm. There's a Mox Amber on the battlefield, and hopefully, if you're Lee, you're able to find more copies of Mox Amber and really get the ball rolling here against a tapped-out opponent. Oh, yeah. So only finding two lands off of that Diligent Excavator, that's not what you want to see off of them. They've got to do better work than that. We want to find some legendaries. We want to fill the graveyard and start finding these Mox Ambers because um, without them, it's a little tricky to get the combo going. Tamio, what are you fishing for? Let's see what... Lee names. If we're plussing, I think we're plussing for Mox Amber because that's yeah. kind of the missing piece to this here puzzle. Uh, if we're minusing, we're getting something different back. He could go for Excavator as well, and it looks like he'll go for the 1-3 instead. So Mox Amber does go to the graveyard. I suppose that it's is still bad. that is still finding yeah, yeah, Mox still Amber. Find it, yeah. yeah, so that, that'll work fine. But again, you see the mill wasn't great. It was a couple of lands and not a ton of legendary permanents. So Lee, weirdly, might not be able to go fully off this turn. Well, he's going to try, and when you can have the opportunity to, you're going to. So we're going to get rid of redundant copies of Tamio, perhaps, and yeah, Ashiok should stay. Is it very Time Reveler? So Mox is going to stay for obvious yeah. reasons. Ashiok's almost certainly going to stay as well because Ashiok can be replayed, mm -hmm. and then you can mill yourself for four more cards, which is essentially drawing four yeah. cards and going further. So I think that's what we're going to see here. Is you probably just move Tamio and either the other Tamio or Teferi. Oh. And it, wow, I'm a, I'm a little surprised by the Ashiok choice there. Wow, okay. I really am. I'm very curious to know why that was the card that gets sent away. Lee knows he's got a plan, so let's see what it is and how this unfolds. We're going to run out the second copy of Mox Amber, start milling with the Diligent Excavator. What does it hit? Two more lands. Wow, the lands have not been kind to Lee this game. Yeah, these mills with the Excavator and just getting cards into his graveyard has not gone particularly no, well. Not at all. Let's see, maybe. Did you redeem yourself? Okay, okay it's another well, fairy. fairy. It's okay. We can bounce the uh, Mox Amber here, get another mana off of that, draw another card. More land. Goodness gracious me, oh my. This land is misbehaving terribly. Uh, okay, oh, there we go. That's a another mox. mox. That's okay. good. That's good. Okay, so the deck is behaving. Well, starting to behave a little bit now. Let's see what Lee does here. We're going to go digging through the graveyard, perhaps. Does have a land to play for turn. Oh, deciding against it. Let's activate Kethis and send back the two planeswalkers, perhaps. Just to keep things looping, get that diligent excavator milling. He might turn his attention to Matt Nassia, perhaps, if he feels like he's set up for it. Do you feel like he is or not I yet? I don't think he's there yet. The interesting thing, don't forget, is that he hasn't played a land yet, so mm -hmm. he does have access to a little bit more mana. Yep. He's already used the he's already used the Teferi and the Tamio that are on the battlefield, so he can do a little bit of looping of these Mox Ambers. Every Mox Amber that he plays is going to mill two additional cards, get him a little bit deeper into his deck. But... You know, the mills have been unkind thus far. Yeah. And we might wow. actually be to the point now where he says, I need to remove a, a Mox Amber from my graveyard because I actually need one of the cards in my graveyard to do something that yeah. matters. Yeah, we need something to do something. And uh, that's why Lee's taking just a little bit of extra time to decide which ones are going to exile. It's always It always feels a little bad when you have to send a Mox Amber off. Yeah, and, and normally we don't see players hesitate of Lee's, mm -mm. of Lee's quality about what this decision is, but this is actually a pretty tough one. Yeah, so, it's crucial. So there goes the mox, it looks like. Yep, only one mox to work with now off of Kethis. All right, so it looks like he wants to bounce something with Teferi. Perhaps his own cards. 
you know, get the mocks going again. What did he find there? Diligent excavator and an Ashiok, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that's not too shabby. Could bring Ashiok back. Another mill trigger off to Ferry. There's Teshar and another land. Teferi is now going to minus and send back the Mox Amber to hand, allow him to replay that, get another trigger off the Diligent Excavator, and finding a redundant copy of uh, Kethis the Hidden Hand, so that probably won't be played. Oh, Fibblethip's not too shabby. We could play Fibblethip. Yeah, we could play Fibblethip. Fibblethip's a hero, did you know that? <laughs> 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 I was playing a game once and I needed to draw my Urza's Ruinous Blast and Fibblethip was my last hope. So you want to know why I like Fibblethip so I, much? I think I'm figuring it out It's because he drew me Urza's Ruinous yes. Blast and I won the, the game. Of course the did. Yes. Well, now Fibblethip's being exiled, I'll let you talk about that with <laughs> Lee a little bit later. Oh no, don't send him away, he's a good boy. <laughs> Can Fibble, uh, so what's interesting is, is Lee all the way there? He's going to play another Mox. Yeah. He can play another Teferi, he can bounce another thing. His hand is not there of any go. interest to him right now. There we go, another Mox is in the graveyard Oh yeah, now. okay, so he's he's there, right? That felt like what was missing. Yeah. And again, he has not played a lane yet for the turn, so we might see Teshar this turn. And Ooh, if it's Teshar this nice. turn, then the game is almost certainly over. Because remember, Teshar is only gonna cost three as opposed mm -hmm. to four. And then the text on that card is going to matter a whole bunch because now we start to get fully out of control. Another Kethis activation here. We'll see what he wants to exile. Almost certainly Vraska and something yeah. else. He can count his deck, know how many cards are left, and go from there. So it's starting to get to that point where we might actually play <laughs> a second match in our grand finals oh. here today. Will that be the first time? It will be the first time, yes. Wow. All right, so a monumentous occasion. Momentous occasion. I just combined two words there because why not? So he's now contemplating replaying some stuff from his graveyard. He does have the Teferi hanging out, but... Uh... Maybe it's just a case of getting the triggers off of the Diligent Excavator. Just keep refilling stuff and then turn his attention to, to Matt Naz. That's, all, that's always what I'm trying to figure out is when do we turn our attention to our opponent or well, do we just keep milling ourselves? It is worth noting that Lee does not have... He, what he's doing is having over his deck how many cards he has in his deck. <laughs> I think he's got 25 cards in his graveyard and like 10 cards left in his deck. I don't think he has very many uh, because he's done a lot of milling with Ashiok and yeah. a bunch of other cards. So. This is getting a little bit dicey. Yeah, it's it's starting to feel very nerve-wracking here. It's uh, not a comfortable feeling. I imagine how Lee must be feeling during this match. All right, Diligent Excavator, let's go. Back out you come. We're going to be milling for four now. And uh, this, this is looking good. Two Diligent Excavators, I like it. I mean, it's taken him a little bit... It's taken a little bit longer than expected to actually get the ball rolling yeah, yeah. here. Matt's but, probably like knitted a sweater by now. Oh yeah, I mean Matt. Matt is <laughs> Matt is fully just you know on the Magic Online days we call it F six. He's probably just pressed enter and just said you know if I'm dead <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, okay, I don't have any responses yeah. and tapped out. Resolvable. So, yeah, do do your worst and Lee is really trying <laughs> to yeah. do his worst. But you can see he's taking his time. You know you don't want to just rush through this and you know possibly make a mistake and give the turn back to Matt who could just as easily pull off something like this. So here we go, more Diligent Excavators. We've got Fibblethip as well as an option, but I think it's, you know, 100% mill plan. He's going to be down to four cards left in his deck. Ooh, ooh which might, that's Which, dicey. again, it might be totally fine, because then you're looping Moxes very easily, and then every time you cast a Mox, that means Excavator's milling your opponent six cards. Oh, goodness me. So you, you can conceivably put yourself down to zero cards. You don't die because you're not trying to draw a card, mm -hmm. and then you just mill your opponent's entire library, and then Matt dies when he tries to draw his card on his upkeep, so... Or in his draw step, pardon me, so... This is all this is all doable if yeah. you're Lee. So this is Lee's game to lose pretty much. Now it's all just a case of, all right, how do I lose this and let's avoid that at all costs. But Lee is also being very careful. He is. Assassin's Trophy. Now what's that going after? Kethis? Or no. Oh, we're gonna blow up our own stuff. No, but you can't. You can only target an opponent's mm -hmm. stuff. Hmm. No stuff touching. So Kethis. Gonna go digging in the graveyard again, sending himself and Fibblethip into exile. We don't want to draw too many more cards. This is, Oof. Is, this is he doesn't have that many legendary permanents left. Oof. This is I'm nervous for him. I'm a little nervous <laughs> for him too. Yikes. Okay, now we get to mill our opponent. Yay! All right, this is the time I have been waiting for. So Matt's gonna go from 34 cards down to 28. Uh, okay, you quick math it. How many uh, how many activations do we need to mill out Matt? Um, seven. 
Seven. Okay, cool. Six. Six. Six times six, 36. Okay. <laughs> well, so, because there's three excavators in play, that yeah. means every time you play a legendary, so you need six legendaries to do it. Yeah. Because you've got 34 cards, six times six is 36, so. Well, there's none, oh wait, does that diligent excavator in the graveyard get sent back? It might be less than that, because there's an excavator that could be on the way yeah. back, too, so. I think that's coming back. Oh, we're milling ourselves. Oh. I, mean, I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna ice his entire deck. Yeah. There's at this point, there's almost no reason not to. You're not gonna draw a card. No. So the fourth diligent excavator is online. And we are happily milling ourselves. You I am. Cards. That means that four, it's four legendaries now because seven times four is twenty-eight. I'm really nervous. <laughs> I just see that empty library. And I'm like, oh dear, please don't draw a card ever. Well, that part's not going to happen. No, 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 that yeah, won't that, happen. That part, he's, that he's part I'm, I'm the least scared of. He's totally fine. But now it's just a case of, okay, can I mill Matt Nass? And I think the answer is very much yes. So here we go, Diligent Excavator is having a good time with Matt Nass, and it's quite ironic that uh, Jace is his avatar, and uh, he's happily milling away. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> uh, I, think, I think he's there now at this point. Lazav's going to come back from the Teshar. Um, replaying a Kethis, which means that the Kethis that's on the battlefield is going to go to the graveyard, which is another legendary in the graveyard. Oh, yep. There we Matt go. Matt knows that Matt can do the math very quickly and see wow. that Lee is going to get the job done. Holy moly. So for the first time ever, we're oh, wow. into match two of the grand finals. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to happen, honestly. I was no. counting and I was like, there, there, everything's already been exiled because Jeez. Matt had had Ashiok in play earlier in the match, right? Or in the game. Uh, it didn't look possible to me. No, th that was it. that was a back and forth, just kind of crazy game. That's yeah. that's one of the situations again that demonstrates the power level of this deck, which is sometimes you have to mill your entire library, figure out what legendaries you have <laughs> left, and then mill your opponent out with the excavators. It's fortunate for me that he's able to get Teshar back on the battlefield. Yeah, I don't think I breathed game. at the end. There. Yeah, no, yeah. I was also yeah. like, this is yeah. getting precarious. Wow. But you know what? He knew exactly what he was doing, what he had to do to win the match. So. Kudos to him. He gets and to do it again. Kudos yeah. to Matt Nass for just <laughs> hanging in there, yeah. just in case, because it did seem possible <laughs> yep. that that you just run out of legendaries to exile in order to get Kathis going. Yeah. Okay, Jeez. so it's all down to this match. Once again, this will be the third time today we have seen a match between Matt Nass and Lee Shi Tian. I bet they're sick of each other by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so here we go. That is a great looking opening hand. Look at that. Well, it's game one again. Oh yeah. For these players. So we're pre-sideboard, so all that interaction that we saw in the second and third games, those aren't here right now. So that's part of the reason that Othakai is still in the deck here for Lee and for Matt, because Matt's been boarding all of his out and Lee has been doing the same. <laughs> Matt on a mulligan here is going to be sending his Oath of Kaya to the bottom, because again, that card's not particularly good in the mirror, so. Underway we go, Lee's got, as far as pieces of the combos are concerned, he has just Diligent Farmhand, whereas if you're Matt, you've got a copy of Ashok, which matters. But neither player is looking at a very strong hand because neither one has Kethis at yeah, this point. Yeah, no Kethis at the moment, but uh, just running out the Diligent Excavator does Lee. He's got two of them in hand, which could give him an advantage somewhere. We do have Ashiok in the hand of Matt Ness, so that'll come into play next turn, no doubt. Fibbleth up bringing some cards, finding another Tamiya Collector of Tales. Temple of Silence off the top there for Li Shi Tian. If I'm mad, I'm feeling very advantaged in this game. You know, you've got a hand here that can, it can battle, yeah. for lack of a better term. You've got Tamiel, which can solve some problems, though you wish you didn't have three copies. You <laughs> yeah. wish you only had one, maybe two. You've got Ashiok, which can check your opponent's graveyard. And you've got Fibblethip to be able to smooth your draws a little bit. Of course, as we all know by now in the mirror, the life total does not matter. Mm -hmm. So it's all about finding the key pieces, especially in game number one, which Lee's having some sincere difficulty doing. So Temple of Silence finding another Fibbleth up the Lost, sending it to the bottom of the library. He does have one in hand, so he can go card drawing. This Diligent Excavator is getting uh, antsy, swinging in for the one point of damage. Do we ever want to kill Fibbleth up here? Does well, what's, we flood the library? Or just... Well, so it's a little bit interesting, you know, it is, Matt's probably thinking, does my life total actually matter? But more importantly, what he's thinking is, is do I want to have a creature on the battlefield to step in front of a Planeswalker like yeah. Ashiok? And I think that's way more important, falling down from 18 to 17. Not terribly relevant. So as we analyze this hand here for Matt Ness, the Ashiok is an option. Another Fibblethip is an option. We got four tam three Tamios, excuse me, that will come into play in a little bit. But Ashiok Dream Render enters the battlefield, mills himself for four, and exiles a non-existent graveyard because no player has managed to get any cards in the graveyard just yet. Decent little draw there for yeah. Lee. Not too shabby. So all the colors for both players. It's a 
pretty good. No Kethis yet. He's being a little shy. It's got a bit of stage fright, I think, but we do need that card on board eventually if we want to go absolutely ham dangle. Yeah, what's what's Tamiel's a nice draw. You've got green, blue, white, colorless, so you can cast that easily enough. You can name a card, of course, as Fibblethip's going to jump in front of a diligent excavator there, and then Oath of Kaya can finish things off, so that's not bad either. I like Lee's positioning a little bit more than Matt's now, because now Ashiok's off the battlefield. Mm -hmm. You get to mill yourself some with the excavators. Yeah. And you oh, get to keep moving that way. So that's actually, this is actually pretty yeah. nice if you're Oh, we found Kethas. He's going to have to be dug out of the graveyard, though, by Tamiyo. Mm -hmm. Showing up dirty for the job. Tisk, oh, yeah, tisk. But the, hey, but that's finding it. And that's all that matters <laughs> yeah. is you've got to find it. Yep. So one of the first Tamios from Matt Nass's hand is going to enter the battlefield. Possibly plussing to go digging for some stuff. Is there anything you'd want to bring back from the graveyard? It's just the Ashok there, right? Yeah, there's not a ton going on down there. He's going to plus. I, don't, I, I imagine... Oh, yeah. I mean, of these, which is the most important? He's going to go Diligent Excavator. Kethis is also important as Ooh. well. He didn't find either. So now Lee with two Excavators on the battlefield. I don't think it's a win this turn, but it could be, depending on how things go here for Lee, the following turn. Yeah. So he found the only copy of Teshar in his deck, and we've seen how that card can be pretty darn good in certain situations, especially if you've got all your uh, three CMC or, or, sorry, two CMC or less. No, it's three. It's three. Three CMC or mm -hmm. less uh, creatures in the graveyard. So. Yeah, I bet he's he's maybe quite interested in playing Teshar and then running out something next turn, provided there's no Ashi up for Matt Ness, and then bringing him back that way. Yeah, this is a very advantageous situation here for Lee, where this game was a little bit back and forth, and it's funny because we're only on the fifth turn of the game. It was a little <laughs> bit interesting on turns two and turns three because it didn't look like either player had a very good hand. Lee's hand has materialized into a pretty good one, oh, while yeah. Matt's is still having some difficulty uh, coming together. So... Lee's going to do some milling of himself. Mox Amber among the cards that have been placed into the graveyard. And Tamiel will be naming something or returning something momentarily. I think it's going to be Kethis, so it makes all the others cheaper, but I may be wrong. Well, Kethis? Yes? It's hard to say no to that. Yeah. You know, the deck is kind of built around it, so if it's a pretty good card to yoink back from the graveyard. The two diligent excavators are going to go and smack Tamiyo a few times and hopefully get that off the battlefield, but little do they know there are two more to deal with, so good luck with those, my dears. So now Matt Ness, just taking a look at his options. He's got the Temple of Mastery. He's got uh, Teferi that can bounce something back. He's yeah, got that's... Tamiyo. There's not a ton going on mm. here for Matt in his graveyard or in his hand. This draw has just not come together particularly well. Tamiya will have to almost certainly name a card and hit a card. He missed on uh, Diligent Excavator last turn, um, but Nasty Matt's going to think about what he wants to do on this turn and what he wants to do with his Tamiya because this decision is the one that's going to make this game continue. Yeah. He gets this wrong, this game almost certainly ends. It's a little bit of an awkward situation to be in, right? You've got no uh, diligent excavators, you've got no moxes, you have Fibblethip to draw you some cards, but it's not like the ideal situation you'd want to be in right now. No, I'm, if I'm mad, I'm not feeling great about this game. Mm -hmm. His draw has just not come together all that well, drawing too many copies of Tamiyo this time around. Yeah. The land that plays Temple of Mystery, which is a totally fine land, it's, a, it's not great right now. You'd much rather have it earlier in the game, but he's in some serious trouble, and he knows it. That's why his turn to slow down. Yeah. He's just thinking about, you know, what his sequence is, how he gets out of the slight pickle that he's in, scrying a card to the bottom, and uh, probably going to see Teferi or a Fibblethip out here. Tamiyo hasn't activated yet, so we're going to have to go and find something useful if we're Matt Ness. The best options here for Matt in the graveyard, in, in my estimation, are the Ashiok or the Kethis. Mm. Kethis coming... Kethis coming back, deploy that, deploy Fibblethip, draw a card, maybe set something up for the following turn. If you get back Ashiok, you can check Lee's graveyard, though I'm not sure how far that's going to get you. So those are uh, those are the things I think that Matt is considering on this turn. There's no real reason to deploy another copy of Tamiyo, so you can no. knock those out. <laughs> um, and then you can knock out Fibblethip probably on its own, especially because you've already played the land for this turn. So And then Zaveri doesn't really have any much of anything to bounce. So. No. He'd just be sitting there and plussing. Yeah. <laughs> just hanging out like uh, Teferi does sometimes. So there's, so there's not a lot of there's not a lot of good options here mm. for Matt, uh, oddly enough. You know, you have to kind of cross your fingers and hope nothing too bad happens, but you also know that your opponent has Kethis in hand, so you're probably going to assume the worst. Yeah. So Tamiyo is going to plus. What are we naming? Diligent Excavator, perhaps? No, we're finding Kethis again. Okay. That's cool. So we can go Kethis Fibblethip, like you mentioned, just uh, the slightly above-ground way of doing it. 
Part of the reason that this might be happening too is because Matt think Matt's thought process is, pardon me, of, all right, I'll play Kethys, I'll play Fiddle with Hip, I'll draw a card, I'm defending my Planeswalker, and the next turn, uh, perhaps Tamil will return something that I need, yeah. and I can maybe win the turn that or win the turn or the game that way. So Kethys is going to go digging in the graveyard, exiling two cards. Woof, look at that hand. Looks like he's going to do Fiddle Thip from the graveyard. Yeah, Fiddle Thip from the graveyard. Can we find a Mox? Ooh. Yes, we do. Good boy, Fibblethip. See, this is why I like him. He's a great guy. So now we got a Mox online. We can play another Fibblethip. We can get a Fibblethip into the graveyard, and we could possibly maybe find another Mox. We do need a Dungeon Excavator. We need some way to mill ourselves a bit more just to keep filling that up. Hey, you know, Matt's, crying. Matt's trying to get as lucky as he can here. That's yeah. one of the things you have to do sometimes. When your hand's not coming together and your graveyard hasn't really come together, not only in this matchup or with this deck, but in Magic in general, sometimes you have to think to yourself, yo, I got to get real <laughs> lucky uh, to be able to get back into this game, and I need some things to not work out for my opponent, too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's appropriate just to play towards the luck side of things. Matt being a very, very, very accomplished combo player, yeah. he knows that. So he has have to pass the turn back to Lee, so he gets to play again. What do we go digging for here? We got the Diligent Excavators, we have a Kethys. Must be Mox now, shouldn't it? That's I the one that's piece that's missing. I think that's next up. Oh yeah, doesn't find any the of whiff. them though. That's a whiff. Is there a whiff counter? You know, like in, uh, in Magic Streams, there's a punt counter. There's no whiff counter ever. Not, you could innovate that. We could. That could be your totally thing should. on your stream. I am copywriting that, don't steal it, <laughs> Twitch. Cool, all right, so carrying on here. <laughs> Just deciding what we want to tap. Who's coming into play now? I'm guessing it's gonna be Kethus into a Fibblethip, as he can make legendary spells cheaper by one. So discount Fibblethip is gonna be the play. We're milling ourselves for four. That feels nice. See, this is, this is what the deck wants to do. It wants to mill some stuff. Ooh, uh, there's your nice. first Mox. Nice, nice. That's the, that's the thing I'm keeping track of now, is how, is how many Mox is he able to find. For Lee, because now Lee, it looks like there are there are two in the graveyard. Yeah, this is almost done. Yeah, this yeah. looks good. This is almost done. Yeah, so Lee is He's got is enough legendaries pretty. to exile. Uh, he's got Moxes in the graveyard, and Moxes will, of course, trigger the Diligent Excavator. So this is... This is looking pretty good for Lee now. Ness is probably going, oh, damn. Start, I should not send back that, uh, that turn to you. Start your top, start your, uh, start your stopwatch. When's Mac going to concede? <laughs> right now, actually. Okay. Okay. Well, cool. So take a look at sideboard times. <laughs> anything different from the first game? Nope, it's the exact same. Exact same. Uh, Lee didn't change anything, Matt didn't change anything. So if you're just joining us, it's Oath of Kaya's, Yagmas Vile Offering, Tamiyo, uh, Teferi, Fibblethip, and Tulazov's out. More interactions in. So Legion's End times two, same with Assassin's Trophy and Vraska, Singletons of Noxious Grass, Tyrant Scorn, another copy of Ashiok and the Elder Spell for Matt. Those four Oath of Kaya's have been leaving all day. So those <laughs> are gone along with two Lazavs and the Drowned Catacombs. Replace a non-basic with a basic because of Assassin's Trophy. And then some interaction of his own in two Vraska's Tyrant Scorn, Elder Spell, another copy of Ashiok and that Jace, which he has already won a match with today, but he needs to win the next two games. It's like deja vu all over again. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get things kicked off here. Pretty good opening hand. We've got the Legion Excavator, we've got Kethys, Elder Spell, and Tamiyo. This is a really, really, really good hand. Yeah. Um, the mana is, we're missing black. Yes. We're still missing black. Yes. Okay. So that we'll need to find, but for the most part, Lee's hand's looking pretty darn good. Matt Nass running out of Fibblethip. It's going to draw him a card. We'll have to wait to see what that is. Yeah, we're going to be just playing Ooh. from Lee's perspective this game, we've been told. All right, so Diligent Excavator on the battlefield. We need to find a Swamp if we are Li Shi Tian. Matt Ness running out of Mox Amber. So he can blue. play something on good. four. Tanya, yeah, that's a really, really good turn for him. Plusing, probably naming Diligent Excavator or Kethys. Let's get that combo online. It's feeling good from both players so far. This is good so far for both players. Matt's ahead on mana, and especially because he's on the play, this is a great spot to be in. You've got a Tamiyo that's gonna be filling up the graveyard and finding specific cards or returning cards from the graveyard. So that part of things is really, really good here for Matt. It's worth noting again, if you're Lee, you're real far away from casting the Elder Spell, and yeah. you can't cast Kethys yet. You've got another Breeding Pool, another Hollowed Fountain, so you're missing a key color of mana and oh, yeah. no access to Moxon. So Teferi can come into play here. Can't really bounce anything though, because he doesn't want to give Matt Nass card draw with another Fibblethip. So does he just bounce his own Diligent Excavator, but then he, to, you know, he dies to a Fibblethip? What's, ooh. Yeah, just, it could be a simple plus. Just plusing for now? Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not your favorite. Yeah. But. 
In this situation, it's always like, okay, how hasty are you to get to, to your uh, black mana source? You can't forget, so. too, you can also always minus and just draw a card because it's up to one, so you don't have oh, yes, to bounce true. something. yeah, true, you don't have to target anything. So it, the Excavator could still stay on the battlefield. Not, not bouncing Fibblethip is, again, not your favorite, but one thing that this does do is it shuts off the mocks yes. in the interim, which means that Matt has to deploy another Legendary Permanent to turn it back on. Yeah, that's pretty good. So this isn't bad. Bouncing something that draws a card is a little unorthodox, but it makes some sense to me if I'm Lee here. Yeah, like you, like you said, it just shuts off his ramp a little bit. So he has to replay a legendary to get that back online. He's found a Kethis, so that's ready to get rocking and rolling. He hasn't got... He's got some stuff in the graveyard he could bring back with Kethis. It'll be interesting to see what he does here. If he wants to run out the Fibblethip first, or if he's got a Diligent Excavator in hand, perhaps, to start the mill game. We'll have to wait and see. So, Diligent Excavator, there we go. Okay. Into Kethis. Kethis, get, your, cool, get cool. your mill. Yeah, yeah. Now remember, this is a sideboarded game. This isn't game number one, so this is a game where players do have interactions after sideboard. Ways to kill Kethis once it gets on the battlefield. Though, as you can see with Lee's hand, Ailey, there is no black mana to be able to nope. play something like a Noxious Grasp here. Yikes. That is a yikes. So, uh, <laughs> we're going to be hoping for some black mana for Lee to get this game really underway. But Matt Nass is having a great time finding Mox Amber number two. And if he's got enough cards here, he could possibly go absolutely nuts with his graveyard dungeon excavator making short work of the cards on top of his library, Fibblethip drawing a card and triggering as well. Yeah, this turn's pretty darn good. Yeah, here this for is Matt. fantastic. Able to play Excavator, Kethis, Fibblethip, activate <laughs> the Tamio to find the Kethis. Everything's really, really going Matt's way in this second game. Yeah, he's got some great cards to pick from as well in the graveyard, so. We're going to see them cast now. There's the other Mox Amber. Let's go milling. Finding another Diligent Excavator and a Tamio. Just a spare if you need one. You know, you never know. You might need a spare Tamio. Now, I'm not going to call this one over, even though now there are multiple Moxes in the graveyard. Yeah. So, again, this is what's so scary. Think about what we were looking at coming in this turn. What did, what did Matt have? Three lands, a Mox, a Tamio. What does Matt have now? A lot more than that. Uh, a lot, yes. Yeah, yes. a lot more than that. <laughs> And he's going to keep getting more because this Mox Loop is just going to keep filling the graveyard courtesy of the, the, the Diligent Excavator. Well, viewers, start, your, to start yep. your stopwatch. All right, let's see. How long is Lee going to suffer through this? <laughs> it's not suffering. It's Oh, what is it then? It's, it's time to do your taxes, <laughs> Cedric. Oh, yeah, that's super fun. Are, are we sponsored by TurboTax? I didn't know it. Uh, What's going no. on here? <laughs> All right, so Ashiok now increasing the millage and getting rid of Lee's graveyard. He hasn't got much going for him, and now he's got even less because he's got no black mana, he's got no graveyard, and he's got no real chance at this rate. Yeah, Matt is, uh, Matt's got it, I think it's got it all rolled up. It only takes one excavator. If you have multiples, it's, uh, it makes things so much easier. Oh, yeah. But the ability to chain all of these moxes because he's now got three to work with mm -hmm. means that he'll probably be able to mill his entire deck. Yeah. And maybe go towards that Jace kill again. Yeah. Not sure, but, you know, Matt's got some mana floating, he's got Ashiok on the battlefield, he can probably loop Ashiok's mill his whole deck. Yeah. Um, It'll certainly be quicker if he mills himself, so yeah. please Matt, for the sake of everyone, <laughs> uh, Matt's go favorite, for the mill. Matt's favorite interaction, playing Teferi, bouncing his mox, drawing a card, milling himself. It's pretty good. It's worked for him so far, yeah. I like it. Extra mill triggers, extra mana, sure, why not? This does, this, this should go to a third game. These guys yeah. have really just kind of battled against each other here. Like they've I been said, the stars probably, of the show. They're probably sick of each other by now. Yeah, th I mean, they've been the stars of the show today here on MPL <laughs> Weekly, no doubt. Oh, yeah. Both ex expertly piloting this deck to the top two spots twice now. So, yeah. Kudos to them for getting this far. One of these players will make it straight into day two of Mythic Championship 5. So, all the marbles to play for. There it here. is. All right, who... There it is. Who, who guessed? What was that ding, like? Ding, 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 ding. We got a winner, at least for that game. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes you but. have to tap out. A little sleep yeah. and hold. It's a painful, <laughs> it's a painful way to go. Uh, so game three, yep. just the, the last one here between this, Kethis Mirror. Uh, who's on this the will... play? Lee? Uh, yeah, he just lost. Yeah. Give, give me a lane. So. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, the, the, the matchup is, there's a lot of interaction back and forth, okay. but then, again, just that highlights it, Ailey, of had nothing. Yeah, had, had nothing, Tamio, now have they everything. They have everything, and yeah. you're dead. <laughs> Pretty much, so let's see if Lee's deck will behave this time. He has the black source straight away, so that's, you know, one, one box tick, but uh, he's missing white now. So, deck, behave, give us white mana, and let's get a good game here, please. Nope, that's not it. Come on, behave. 
I mean, that could be the missing piece of the puzzle. That's what. Well, that's kind of what Doom Lee in the last game was just, yeah. okay, wrong mana, too slow off the ground, so on and so forth. It's okay for now. Like, Teferi's the only thing he can't play, but if he finds Kethas, he's going to want to get that going. ASAP. It is important. If you're going to be missing a color of mana, have it be white, yeah. have it be black. Now, ideally, you're not missing any of it, but at least with black, you can play the other spell and you can play Noxious Grasp. Mm -hmm. And that'll definitely slow down certain things that uh, Matt Nass wants to do. So we're going to fire off the Mox Amber, we're going to start milling, and uh, hopefully we're going to find some white mana soonish. We can rock the Tamiyo next turn, though, milling a Diligent Excavator and a Tamiyo. So, going to have to pause the turn back, and let's see what Matt can get going. Well, worth noting that in order to play Tamiyo, he needs to draw land. Yes. Doesn't have one right now, because the Mox isn't having yeah, mana. Yeah, Mox doesn't do anything right the now. The Excavator is not a legendary, uh, legendary permanent, mm -hmm. so... This is a, this could be a problem. There are draw steps that Lee could have next turn that do nothing. Let's hope that's not the case, but uh, Matt Nass just deciding what he wants to do with his turn. He does have a Diligent Excavator in play. No legendaries just yet, so I'm guessing he has legendaries in hand, because, you know, this deck is all legendaries, barring these Diligent Excavators. They just get to hang out with the cool kids, because, you know, they, they, they play an important-ish role. Wouldn't you say? Uh, I would agree. <laughs> so here's what's interesting right now. Matt is taking a little while on his turn. Let's talk about why. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm Matt right now, if I'm Matt's seat as a competitive Magic player, I'm thinking, okay, my opponent did literal nothing on three. They played a Mox and said go. What is in my opponent's hand that they would do nothing? It's either spells they can't cast, some, some number of Kethys or spells that have white mana in them, yeah. or it's something that's reactive, which yeah. means it's some sort of removal spell. So how can I play accordingly? Well, I can't do anything if my opponent doesn't if my opponent draws white mana, but I can try to play around reactive spells. So Matt's going to play a Teferi. He's going to bounce an Excavator and draw a card, get in here for a point of damage. But he's probably just thinking, what is my opponent having difficulty playing? And as you yeah. can see, Ailey, still no <laughs> white mana. Still no white mana, but we can get a Tamiyo down at least and go digging through the library. So let's see what he names here. Planes. <laughs> yeah. Some white source Please. of mana. Well, Kethus is powerful. Kethus is powerful. It's unplayable currently, though. Yep, didn't find it either Oof. for Tamiyo. And whiff! There's another one for the counter that I haven't created yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've got the Excavator going in for one point of damage against Tamiyo. Can be a pesky card to deal with. Teferi just plussing. Doesn't have anything, any good target to uh, bounce back just yet. Ashiok is going to now have some fun with the graveyard, milling himself, finding a Mox Amber in there, and dispatching of... Oh no, that was... Yeah, there we go, Fibble Thip, and there we go, exiling the graveyard on Lee's side of the board. So this isn't the end of the world if you are Lee, because you have a copy of the Elder Spell. So, yeah. you know, you're able to two for one these Planeswalkers and take care of them. Still looking for that white mana, but at the end of the day, you're still going to have a Tamiyo on the battlefield, so he's still all right, yeah. all things considered. Yeah, it's not all doom and gloom for Lee Shitian just yet. Okay, let's see. Matt, Matt's just going to have to, uh, yeah, find a way to get this over and done so quickly, because we have seen all through that today how this deck just goes from zero to Freaking hero in no time at all. Yeah, if you're if you're Matt, you're still feeling pretty good about this mm. though. Again, you're still just thinking to yourself, what can my opponent not play that is messing them up? And that's the white cards. Yeah. I'd love to be able to get Tammy off the battlefield, but I can't do that. So if you're Lee, how can I can how can I prolong this game? He's yeah. gonna start by activating Tamio and figure out what card he wants to name. Remember it's non-land card that you name with Tamio. So he's gonna go with Ashiok this time. He missed again. <laughs> Unfortunately, whiffing again with Tamiyo, so we're going to have to kill some Planeswalkers on Matt Nass's side of the board, which is perfectly fine. We're not, we're not sure how many he has as backup in hand, but uh, I'm guessing there's several. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to rock out a Diligent Excavator. The Kill moxes. some uh, stuff and things. We gotta remember, yeah, and I, and I just remember this now. The Mox is on, so the ability mm -hmm. to play the Excavator, the Elder Spell, and then still leave Obnoxious Grass makes for about as good a turn as you can get yeah. given the mana issues. Yeah, still pretty good. He's hanging in there. Doesn't need the white mana to survive at this point. Both players seem to be, you know, not finding the ideal, you know, board presence or state that they want. Uh, this graveyard is becoming a bit troublesome. You don't want to see those many cards in there. Lazav the Multifarious triggering the Diligent Excavator can become a copy of the other Diligent Excavator in the uh, graveyard, or Kethus if it ever shows up. We're surveilling two, so we can send one more card to the graveyard. 
or leave it on top. Mm -hmm. Just taking a quick squeeze there, seeing what it is. And his only target is uh, the Diligent Excavator so far, so any additional legendaries will cause him to mill for four. Which is pretty good. It's pretty good if you're Matt Nass. Taking a look through this grave there. <laughs> a lot of cards down there. Oh yeah, I bet Lee wants to play a Ashiok as soon as possible, because yeah. that's terrifying. You know how crazy this uh, this can go. Well, Did you find a Kethys? Ooh, well, it's nice. Well, I was going to copy Kethys, yeah. so that that works all the same. Good stuff. Do we have a Mox Amber? Can we get that going for Matt Nass? So Lee is <laughs> he's analyzing this graveyard. He's like, mm, I don't like this. So we do have a Mox Amber in the graveyard. We will see two cards exiled and stuff being played from there. Kethys and Raska going bye bye. It's really cool that Lazav doesn't, you know, stop being something as soon as uh, it's exiled. But Kethis, i.e. Lazav, is going to die a swift and painful death to the Noxious Grasp that Lee left up, as you pointed out. Yeah, which made for a great turn. Yep. The Noxious Grasp being available means that, you know, there was very, it was very unlikely that was going to be able to go off on his turn. So, Lee is still in this, and there is an active Tamiya, which means this game is far from over, in oh, yeah. my estimation. So the Lazav slash Kethis combo still still rocking. We do have cards we can play from the graveyard due to the trigger. But I think it's just gonna be the Mox Amber for now. It doesn't have a fibble flip in there, it doesn't have any legendaries to turn it on either, so we have to pass it back, turn back to Lee, who now has to find a way to deal with this graveyard because, uh, yeah, it's getting a little out of hand. It's getting quite full. Now, Lee's taking a look at his grave. There's not a lot going on there, but the thing that he can return, because you can return any card, is a Sun Petal Grove. Nice. That's white hey, mana. Hey, white mana. Well done, Plains. You showed up. And then when you play Kethys, that turns on Mox Amber for yes. white mana. So he's getting somewhere. Yes, so now we can com be completely handless and then just play on our graveyard. That's a great feeling for Lee, I'm sure. Must have been a little bit uh, concerned there for a bit. Gonna no, mill ourselves. I will mention that it is entirely possible that Matt dies this turn. Yeah. Matt's tapped out. There's a Kethys. He just milled Mox. He yep. has another legendary in hand in Teferi. Teferi can bounce a Mox. This game could legitimately end right now. All right, let's see. Let's see if it does. Hold your breath, friends. Maybe not for too long, though, because you might pass out. Yeah, that's uh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> So Teferi, as you said, is going to bounce the mox, is going to replay it, is going to trigger the Diligent Excavator yet again, hopefully fill up the graveyard for Kethys to go digging through. Let's see what we got going here. Milly, milly, milly. Is that two lands? That's an unfortunate mill. But it's okay, we can still replay some stuff. We got the mox, we got Fibblethip, so Lazav and Teferi into exile. Let's replay that mox and the Fibblethip. Draw us a card and hopefully it's a goodie. Yeah, this is this is not going to be too hard to keep going. Going to deploy another mox, so the mox that's on the battlefield is going to head to the graveyard. Of course, mill two. There goes. Oh, there's another mox. Another mox. Okay. Yeah, this is looking pretty well, pretty good. Time to call the Uber. Because <laughs> LAX is about an hour from here. <laughs> And Are you going to miss your flight? Friend? I would never. I think you're concerned. You Cedric is me. sitting here checking his watch. He's like, I know this game's taking long, but Cedric. If you follow me on Twitter, I don't miss flights. I just barely make them. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> uh, just imagine you running through the airport. But oh, the I, game's do, not I, oof, yet. I do not run. You don't you run? You don't know me well enough. I walk very, <laughs> I saunter. You just honestly. lift, honestly. Yeah, I do lift. Yeah. I saunter. <laughs> Lee, is, Lee is flexing on Matt right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, this this deck is completely ridiculous. Because, think about, again, I, I've mentioned this a couple times, but I'm going to mention it again. Think about what we came into this turn with. It was draw Kethys, which you didn't have. Mm -hmm. All we had was Teferi. Draw Kethys, Sun Petal Grove in the graveyard. You're probably dead. <laughs> You're probably dead now. The, the the most humorous thing about this deck to me is thinking about when Ivan Flock, Andre Shrosky, and Santa Francisco were playing this in the, uh, the Mythic Championship qualifier rounds on yeah. Arena, and the opponents going like, what is this? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I can imagine that must have been exactly the reaction. Yeah, and then they get wrecked for Yeah, they get completely hours. wrecked, and then they go to sideboard, <laughs> and they're just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, it's just like, uh... You kill anything, I can, you can just bring it back. <laughs> yeah. So, like, nothing works. Nope. Yeah, it's just, those guys are geniuses. I don't know how anyone's brain works that way to think of this deck, but Gosh. they did it. Yeah, innovators for sure. And, uh, yeah, the deck seems to be doing pretty darn good for the five players in this division that yeah. rocked it out. That's a, that's a good testament to the uh, quality of your work, isn't it? <laughs> we, we can't forget either that, you know, in the Sapphire division, in the round-robin play, you know, uh, Shahar, 
uh, brought a deck that was supposed to go against it, and Mono Blue Tempo failed yeah. doing that. Uh, Savage brought Vampires, which you know is a very aggressive deck and could win this matchup, failed yeah. uh, doing that. Uh, so we just saw players try to bring decks that are supposed to counteract this one. BBD, today, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he brought Esper Midrange with four main deck copies of Ashok, failed, failed doing that. Yeah. So, so uh, what beats this deck then? Well, the mirror. The mirror? The mirror is what beats this deck. Uh, Itself is what beats this deck. Okay. That's that's really it. I mean, this, this deck is, it's quite the- uh, I know what beats this quite deck. Quite the combination of cards. What's that? Rotation. Y yes, <laughs> rotation undefeated lifetime. Yeah. Undefeated at defeating decks. All right, so now it's basically just a case of will Lee ever whiff? And I don't think that's the case. With so no. many moxes in the graveyard, this it's basically a foregone conclusion that well, Lee even, is going to win this game. Even in the game where we thought Lee might lose uh, earlier in the yeah. first in the first match of this grand finals, where he, he had to mill himself entirely, yeah, and then you know found yeah. Char and brought other stuff back. He was that was a game where we were unsure if he was going to win, yeah. and he found an avenue to victory there. So unless something strange happens. Here. Maybe a disconnect or a power <laughs> there failure. You go. Maybe. There you go. <laughs> I don't think Lee is going to make a mistake now. It's yeah, we're just going to keep milling us, milling stuff into the graveyard. Ashok is online yet again. Mill is down. Uh, excuse me, Lee is down to thirteen cards <laughs> in his deck. You're like having PTSD now. You're like calling everyone Mill. Yes. <laughs> mill you, Mill me. There we go. There go four more cards oh, to the graveyard. Goodness. Now it is worth noting. Uh, I will mention this that. Lee does sideboard out a lot of legendary permanents yeah. uh, for interaction like Legion's End and Assassin's Trophy and all that stuff. Yeah. I still don't think it'll be an issue. I still think he should be able to win fairly easily from this point, but yeah. the ability to activate Kethis nonstop, it lessens itself after sideboard. That's a lot of moxes. <laughs> that is a lot of moxes indeed. So the world is Li Shi Tian's oyster, and uh, yeah, this uh, game is still anybody's to win. Well, not this one specifically, but yeah, no, uh, no, no. Yeah, the uh, the direct buy into day two of Mythic Championship Five is still anyone's to win. Wow, what does Matt Nass do? I mean, he can't do anything right now, but what what do we? Oh, gosh, I don't even know. What do you have to hope for in the next one? He's got seven cards left in the deck. Uh, the difference between this game, the difference between this game and the last one, I will note. Mm -hmm is that there's no Tashar. No. Tashar makes it very easy because then all your excavators are on the battlefield and then you mill your opponent's entire, uh, entire deck with excavators. So that's really the only difference between this game and game three the last time. So mm -hmm. I think we're starting to go towards Matt with the milling. Yes, we are yep. with the excavators. So we're going to have to do it the really long, hard way because there aren't multiple excavators on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. I presume this won't be a problem here for Lee. We're drawing lands, we're finding moxes, bouncing them. You know, it's all it's all coming up Li Shi Tian right now. Li only has four cards left in his deck. And remember that every time Teferi does draw a well, every time Teferi minuses, it does draw a card. Yeah. So Gotta he has careful. to be a little bit careful there. He doesn't want to mill himself or draw a card when he has no cards left in his deck, so that's a minor concern. Okay, refresh my memory here because there have been a lot of Kethis combos. Are we one one at the moment or is it one O to Li? 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Okay, all right. So my brain has been frazzled by this Kethis combo this week, so this could be Lee comboing off to victory, yeah, right? Yeah, if Lee wins yeah. this, if Lee wins this, he's in the day two of Mythic Championship 5. Holy moly. I made a pun with his name unintentionally. And if Matt gets to untap, <laughs> if Matt gets to untap, he'd probably win, but I don't foresee I that. I don't think that's going to happen. With three Moxes going, with Kethis, with Diligent Excavator, yeah, with four super friends, now three, because obviously Ashok cannot hang out with himself. Yeah, that Ashok's, would be strange. Ashok's pretty nice too, because Ashok mills four cards. Yeah. So Matt's down to 22 cards in his deck now, and of course the graveyard's going to be exiled. Yeah, That's there it. you go. Wow. So coming back all the way from the bottom bracket, after losing Ooh. to Matt Nash in the first round, or yep. the first stage of his. Such an impressive win by Li Shi Tian. Going on today to <laughs> Mythic Championship 5, October 19th to 21st, here in Long Beach, in my state of California, That's a where huge, you guys come to visit me. That is a huge, huge, huge win. You have to. You, That's insane. The advantage you get in the Grand Finals where you only have to win once, yeah. it, it's really, really hard to state how difficult it is, is to win two matches in a row, but we also have to talk about the matchup. We're talking about the Kethis Mirror, mm -hmm. and you're playing against arguably the best combo player in the entire Ooh, world. Pressure. Not to say Lee is bad playing combo. He's very good at playing no, combo. We just watched it, but you're playing against the best combo player in the world, certainly in the MPL, and being able to win twice in that matchup, Kudos to him, he earned it. Oh, yeah. Wow, so, so impressive. Well, we do uh, have an interview with Li Shi Tian after winning that grand final match, so let's Ooh. see him talk to Paul now. All right, I am here with the winner 
of the Sapphire Division, Li Shi Tian. How? I mean, what an incredible series of matches for you to come back and get this. Yeah, it's like I I kind of figure out the cyber plan in the in a match against Ken, and then like I I, I applied that cyber plan and then it works quite well for me. So what was exactly the type of thing that you were looking to do in the matchup? Like, did you change your cyborg plan after you started playing against Ken? So basically, in match one, I, I faced against match. I, I tried to check how he cyborg and then, yeah, figure out what card is actually bad in, in the matchup. And then I, I know that um, removal, removal is kind of important in this matchup because you, need, you actually need to stop your opponent from going off. Sometimes they just set up a Ashok or a Tamiyo in play. And then even you have a shock, and then you, you clear their graveyard, they can still go off in, at the same turn. So you really, really need uh, removals like Elder Spell, uh, Assassin's Trophy, or either even uh, Legion's End. And then you just uh, have to have to uh, stop the, the piece that they can go off. And we saw you with probably the most timely removal spell over the course of the entire yeah. top four when Matt Nass copied Kethis from the graveyard, which then allowed you to cast Noxious Grasp to kill it to stop the combo. Yeah, because uh, if I... Yeah, he can he can cast Mox and then he cast uh, Fipo uh off that one mana. But then if I... Yeah, like I, if I kill the last F that, Kung, that, that copied... Um, uh, Kefes, um, he he doesn't have the mana to to cast it. Like it it costs two. The the mana reducing uh, effect is gone. So basically, he he hit the mocks and then he he only got one mocks in in a grave fight and then he just break from there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just just watching what happened because you had a removal spell in hand, you couldn't use it to kill the Lazav, and the way yeah. he copied it. <laughs> It finally unlocked your removal spell. You know, I, I, I was when I was watching that match too. I'm just like, what could he have here? If he had the removal spell, he would have used it in response to the activation. So it had to be Noxious Grasp as the only <laughs> possible card for you to try to disrupt this combo. Yeah, uh, it, that that was the only instant for me. I think, it, like, even if I have trophy, he can, he can just hit. Uh, he can just hit. He can get swarm and then and then do something else as well. Right, right, right. By the way, you are. The, old, the first player to actually have won two matches in a row to take it all down, which is, which is super <laughs> impressive, right? All right, well, congratulations. You now no longer have to play day one of Mythic Championship in Long Beach. So, uh, you know, best of luck in that event. And, I mean, I know it's going to be feeling great. And I do have a, a, a special request from somebody who was cheering for you coming into this event. I know this was a, a teammate of yours. Eduardo Sajikalik was uh, messaging me going, I really, really, really want Lee to win this. I think he deserves it. I think it's about time. And, uh, and uh, you know, it looks like maybe he gave you a little bit of that little extra good luck uh, to, to take this <laughs> down. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have been... I, 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 I'm so busy in Hong Kong, so we are, we are having rough timing in Hong Kong. So this win is... Yeah, cheer, cheer me up a lot. All right. Well, anyways, again, congratulations, Lee. Best of luck at the next Mythic Championship. Yeah, thank you. Becca, don't cry. <laughs> I'm not crying. You're good. <laughs> Just, you know, I'm really proud of Lee Shitian and uh, he seems uh, very rep in Hong Kong right that. there. Yeah. Went through a lot. Busy uh, times. Uh, wow, what a day we've had with those Kathis mirrors. <laughs> I know it was very tense for me. Here's the bracket of what we've seen today. Li Shitian went to the lower bracket and worked his way all the way back up to defeat Matt Nass, which took two matches to get it. I believe it was yeah. four games out of the six that he walked away with, so yeah. pretty good. Not easy to do. Not very, very impressive. And uh, some really cool games. Elder Spell did seem to be super important uh, in, in addition to Ashiok in the sideboard games. There's a lot of back and forth in those games oh, yeah. and some timely, some timely Timely, timely top decks there for Lee, and that Noxious Grasp, uh, he might want to buy a foil one, <laughs> sign one, frame one, whatever, because it got Nail him into day It got him, a, no, don't do that. Got him, <laughs> it got him into day two of Mythic Championship 5 in Long Beach, which I think we'll all be at. Looking forward to that tournament. Yeah. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, and now he's joining Carlos from Al. Yeah. So they're both in day two automatically, which is really awesome. It's Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, and, you know, shout out once again to Andrzej Strasky, uh, Stan Skivska, Sivka and Yvonne Flock for, for being the masterminds behind this 
crazy creative yeah. deck. Yeah. I the, mean, the I can't even imagine what it takes to construct this type of combo deck. It, it's my dream someday. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's an incredible find be between those three players. They're all great. I could all see. I could see them all being Magic Hall of Famers at some point. But be able to find this out of nowhere when everyone's testing vampires and mono red and Esper, and they're like, oh. We got something for those guys. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, of course, Andre and Stan will be at the Mythic Championship 5 because they qualified yep. through the Mythic Arena qualifiers. They did. All right. Well, Alias, Cedric, it's been such a pleasure to be on MPL Weekly with you this week. And we'll see everyone next week. Stay tuned. And uh, we're about to raid Christian Hawk, the Jockster. So stay tuned for that. Bye. <laughs>